Okay, this study is a caregiving of aging adult study. I did this with my sister-in-law, Kari. And we initially did a survey, I'm a survey monkey, of a small group of faculty and staff and administrators at a small liberal arts college in Minnesota. And it, to investigate um, their experiences and their views of being a caregiver of an aging adult. And from that survey, we came up with a number of statements. Love Survey Monkey because we can just copy and paste. And so you see here, I feel my role as a caregiver is to provide emotional support to that aging adult. I feel my role as a caregiver is to find resources for an aging adult's care. And so we started doing the categories, right? So we have some here that are the role as a caregiver, benefits of caregiving, um, and then these were, so some of these came from a survey and these were from, uh, basically me interviewing my sister-in-law, um, coming up with some additional statements. We had a lot of, um, duplication among the statements within the survey. And so we went through <clears throat> and right. What I need to know was another category. Um, and I just, I went through, they weren't in this order originally. I just, I labeled them and then I sorted them so that they were in groups so I could figure out how many statements I had. And I did it on online this way. I've also sorted them by hand and done something very similar. So here we have what they're the least prepared to do. So they feel, they feel like they need, right? I feel like I need to be more relaxed and have more fun with my aging adult. And so, and then we have help needed. And those were the categories. And then we went through and, and got rid of some statements that maybe were very, a little too specific. So hospice has been a great resource for me and my aging adult. Not everybody in the group had been, has had gotten to the point of calling in hospice. So we decided to eliminate that one. Although we had some general statements about, um, medical help and things like that and so we literally went through and labeled them and you can see where which ones i crossed off right <clears throat> and then the next one was we had an example of the q sample and then we went around a little bit more and eventually right came up then i think this example survey this was maybe this was from the other Anyway, it's hard to remember. It's been a couple years. And here we have all of the statements that we actually used for this caregiver study, right? 48 statements. And this, this is actually, I presented this at um, the Q conference in, I think it was 2010 when it was in Akron. Yeah. And um, I'm actually in the process of hopefully getting it published in a journal. Um, they sent it back to me for a few changes and now I've sent it back to them. So hopefully this will be something that will be published. And I, and I think I might look at this one perhaps as talking about analyzing the data or possibly one of the articles that you've actually had a chance to read. So because that might be much more helpful as far as right seeing kind of the end product and looking at how the list file started. I have a lot of them, so it won't be too hard. But anyway, you can kind of see how this evolved. And then we also have the sorting grid and what that looks like, just how many statements getting that set up. And then this happens to be the sorting grid for this particular study. Much more Gaussian because we wanted them to narrowly focus in on those things that were most like their view and most unlike their view. Unlike, for instance, our classroom study, where having a more general view of research, right, seemed like a better choice for the actual grid.